Ladies and gentlemen, the title of my talk is Surgery for Newborn Glaucoma, the earlier, the, the first cry. The expectation is a perfectly healthy new deliverer. But there are few things as devastating to the parents as the knowledge that they have produced a defective child with newborn glaucoma. All the hopes for perpetuation and fulfillment of their own lives are shattered, and there inevitably follows a nagging sense of guilt that in some way they have been punished. Family tension bounds as they focus blame on each other, and the unconscious desire to reject the child is in constant conflict with their certain knowledge that it is their responsibility to love him and to accept him. Blindness is becoming a social problem, certainly impinging on the conscience even of the developing world. Aware that more than half of the children now blind need not have lost their sight or could have had their visual disabilities corrected. <laughs> Society can no longer ease its concern by offering the old medium of income, nor by the more modern method of pension and relief. Even if a child is incurably blind, he or she still has equal social rights and economic possibilities that must be realized and fulfilled. This calls for the clarification of many aspects of blindness and the determination of the major of the society's responsibility for this segment of the world's population which labors under the handicap of visual impairment. If the tears of this little child move you, they are a window open onto the sea for what you feel are not merely the tears of this one child, but of all the children. I felt that I should dedicate my life in caring for these children and work independently after joining LG Prashad Eye Institute 30 years ago. I would like to share my experiences with you. The more we share, the more we have in this case is so true. In the institute, over 30 years of my work, we developed an integrated management strategy, integrating child's medical, surgical, genetic, and rehabilitation approach, which gives the best result. As late as 1939, Anderson saw little hope of useful vision in the children, despite the detailed evaluation of all known treatment modalities available at that time. And he commented that the future of children with hydrophthalmia is bleak. Now, newborn glaucoma is a surgical disease. Medical therapy is accorded a supportive role to reduce the intraocular pressure temporarily, to clear cornea, and to facilitate surgical intervention. Now, the surgical options are many. Goniotomy is a technique, an internal technique, which requires clear cornea. But over 80% of the children in our Indian patient population present with hazy cornea. And that's the reason an alternative approach of trabeculotomy and external is practiced. And we, in the LB Prasada Institute, combined trabeculotomy and external with trabeculectomy in the initial surgical technique. Otomy and ectomy in the same surgical session. Compared to the European and American patient population, about 80% of the patients in India present with hedgy cornea and the corneal diameter is enlarged. Goniotomy and internal approach is just not possible, and that's the reason combined trabeculotomy and trabeculectomy. This child is a brilliant student, comes top in the class, and uh, completed eight years of follow up, he is studying now fourth standard. He aspires to become a doctor. Because of our extensive research, work, publication, and presentation in the national and international journal, uh, the surgical technique for the first time came into the textbook page. One dollar and co workers in India worked on this disease, combined trabeculotomy, trabeculectomy, which gives the best result. So, the goal of management of newborn glaucoma is fourfold. 
first stage should aim at reducing intraocular pressure and there surgery is the choice and earlier the better. Second step, we should look into the restoration of corneal clarity. Third step, we should do everything to improve visual function in both the eyes. And last but most important fact that we should do things in a way that it will maximize the quality of life of the afflicted children and their family. This is the best case scenario. So when I look back my 30 years of work at the LB Prasad Institute, the impact, the influence of my professional activity and compassionate therapy on children with newborn glaucoma, I'm satisfied. Four of my operated children are now MBBS doctor, eight practicing dentistry, three PhD, and there are several children who have become teacher, engineer, lawyer, practicing journalism, etc. Every child comes with the message that God is not yet discouraged from man. I'll quote Tagore, who can say, if there is written on your forehead the invisible mark, the triumphs of some great striving. Today we search for your unwritten name. You seem to be just of this stage, like an imminent star of the morning. Infants bring again and again a message of reassurance. They seem to promise. Deliverance, light, God. Perhaps the most important investment for a stable and human future a society can make is to care for and nurture its children. <coughs> children are all too often overlooked and forgotten. As a child delegate in 2002, United Nations Special Session for Children commented, You call us the future, but don't forget, we are your present too. Friends, children, our greatest inspiration for the present and best hope for the future. We are guilty of many errors and many faults, but our worst crime is abandoning the children, neglecting the fountain of life. Many of the things we need can wait, the child cannot. Right now is the time, his bones are being formed, his blood is being made, and his senses are being developed. To him, we cannot answer tomorrow. His name is today. Unless we pay attention to the needs of our children, our future is in jeopardy. In recognizing the problems of life in this planet, we must recognize that one of our problems is related to providing our children with every opportunity to develop. To do anything, they must have a sad and lasting vision. When judging the seriousness of the problem of blindness from a social point of view, we should not base our opinion on the number of lines, but rather evaluate the importance of the question on the basis of the number of years in which the blindness persists. Or in other words, to properly assess the financial and the much larger emotional burden of blindness, one must recognize the long-term suffering of the child along with its parents, in addition to society's loss of life years in an otherwise totally productive member. When viewed in this context, society shares with its vision care practitioners the responsibility of preventing blindness in children and to assure that each child has the opportunity to develop to its maximum capacity. This is a right of every child, a wish of every parent, and should be the goal of every society. I believe congenital glaucoma, the new world glaucoma, Early surgery is the key, and we should be very prompt and energetic to get the best results. The way we are doing will go a long way to improve the quality of care we provide, and which will definitely translate into improved quality of life of the afflicted children and their family. I believe what we are doing today will bring to our afflicted children and their families a brighter and better tomorrow. I conclude by saying, Two statements. When I approach a child with newborn glaucoma, it inspires two feelings in me affection for the way he is now <laughs> and respect for what he or she may one day become. And finally, I conclude by saying a few years from now, it will not matter what my bank account was or the kind of car I drove or the sort of house I lived in, but the world will be different 
because I was important in the lives of few children. Ladies and gentlemen, this is my message and I feel this message is worth spreading.